We are going to cover how to convert a bitmap image into a vector image in this tutorial. Corel has a great tool called PowerTrace that will convert your bitmap images into vector. This is a great tool, but it does have some limitations that we're going to cover. So we are back here with our bitmap piggy bank that we had been using in the first couple of tutorials. When I click on my bitmap pig, I get an option on my property bar called Trace Bitmap. I'm going to go to Outline Trace, which will bring up all of my trace presets. All of these presets are going to pull up the Power Trace tool where we will be able to tweak all the preset adjustments. Um, I have not noticed a huge difference between these settings, but I tend to click on Clip Art, which works really well for what we're doing here. So this will open my Power Trace window up, and you can see that this is my starting bitmap image and then this is my new vector image. You can see what a great job that this has done. I can adjust my detail, smoothing, corner smoothness if I want to. You can see that if I move this, it will take the time to adjust for my changes. I want to make sure that remove object overlay is not selected. I also have a color tab you can see it's done a great job with my colors. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. That will bring us back into Corel Draw, and now we have a vector image on top of our bitmap. This is vector. I can go ahead and ungroup it now, and I can change the colors. Um, it's completely editable. So that is how you can turn a bitmap image into a vector image in Corel. So let's go over what kind of images will work for the power trace within Corel. Here I have three bitmap images that I grabbed off of Google Image Search. If you're grabbing bitmap images from the internet to vectorize, I will show you what kind of images to look for. Images like this first one are not what we want. Even though this is a high quality bitmap image with lots of tiny pixels, that is what we want. We want small pixels. Gradients will not work in the power trace. If I send this through Power Trace, you can see that it does a weird things to it. It almost looks like a paint by number. We get little shapes for all the different colors. And if we go under our color tab, you can see we have 19 colors, which is not as all feasible for screen printing. Even if I force my colors down to 10, it doesn't look any better. So make sure your bitmaps are made of flat, solid colors like these two. Now let's talk about quality. I keep saying that you need to start with a high quality bitmap image. What I mean by that is you want a large number of small pixels. When I zoom into my center design, you can see that the pixels are really small. This is a high quality image. However, you can see that the image on the right has really large chunky pixels. This is a low quality image. I'm going to go ahead and run the high quality image through Power Trace. If you ever get this warning, just go ahead and hit Reduce Bitmap. This looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure that the Remove Object Overlay is deselected. If I go to my Color tab, you can actually see that it has given me two reds, and I just want one. So I can go ahead and click on both of them while holding down my Control button, and then click on Merge, and that's going to make them into one red together. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. You can see what a great job this did. This is a perfectly good image now that I'd be able to screen print or vinyl cut. I wouldn't personally ever screen print this particular mouse because of copyright laws, however. Now let's run the low quality image through Power Trace. And you'll see the issues that we end up getting. You can see our sad mouse is quite a mess here. There's simply not enough visual information in our low quality image for Corel to know what to vector. Our colors are going to be a mess too. 
even though as humans we don't really register as gray being in this image, however, if we zoom in really close, you can see that there are gray pixels, and that's why Corel has given us one, two, three, four, five gray colors. Even if I force this down to 10 colors, it's not going to look any better. The Power Trace is a wonderful tool within CorelDRAW, but you can see that it does have limitations. Let's go over another common scenario. I have often found that I have customers that have someone bring in an old t-shirt and they want the same design printed on new shirts. If the design is made of flat colors, there's a good chance that you'd be able to run it through the Power Trace successfully. The best option would be to put the shirt on a scanner and scan in the design. If the design is too large, like this one was, to fit on the scanner, then you can just take a photograph. Don't take a photograph like this of the whole shirt. Uh, you really want to zoom in nice and close and make sure that the shirt is perfectly flat when you take the photograph. Something like this we can run through Power Trace. Outline Trace, Clip Art, Reduce Bitmap. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. It's done a pretty good job. We can adjust my detail and my smoothing. I think I'll make it a little smoother. And let's go over to our color tab. You can see that it's given us a bunch of grays. We're going to want to merge these together. I'm going to take the three darkest grays and merge those together into one color. And then I'm going to take the two lighter grays and merge those as well, because we ultimately want a two color design. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So here is my design. It looks okay. Let's go ahead first and change the colors. I'm actually going to run it through my template editor within the Instant Designer where I can just click on this color and replace it with a Pantone white. And then I'm going to take the darker gray and replace it with a Pantone black. There we go, go ahead and hit OK. I'm just gonna throw a black square behind everything. So we can see that happening there. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. This has done a pretty good job. We can go ahead and ungroup this and I would definitely encourage you to clean this up just a little bit and we can do that using our shape tool, especially in the text areas where it's more obvious that it has been run through a power trace. We could come in here and clean up this a little bit. I tend to focus on text, on faces, uh, which this guy kind of has a face, and uh, hands. Those will be more obvious if they are distorted or some um, didn't come through the trace perfectly. This design here right now would be ready to screen print. I would just discard the black separation and use the white separation and I would be able to screen print this design. So here we have covered how to take a good high quality image through the power trace feature in Corel. However, I completely understand that you don't always get high quality images to start with from your customers. So the next tutorial is going to cover what to do if you have a low quality image that you need to vectorize.